something you can't have. And he said, the day you eat that one, you're going to surely die. But he had to exercise self-control. And sometimes through people, people entice you to lose your self-control. Let's going to continue tonight on, on, on our series titled, The Fruit of the Spirit. So, uh, everybody, The Fruit of the Spirit. Tonight, we're going to look at, it's number nine, and probably, they're all important, because every single one of them is important. One of them does not have uh, more significance than another one, but this is the last one, so this is where God wants to tie it all up together. And the title for tonight, uh, uh, number nine, is, Nicole, Self-Control. Okay, Self-Control. If you read your Bibles or you're a student of the Bible in the last days, the people will lose their self-control, their anger. They will lose. Uh, we know with Thanksgiving, you see there, you had an apple, you had a piece of cake. How many of you, that, that turkey called you up in the, at 3 in the morning and you went in your sleep to open it up and have an extra piece? Or the dessert, uh, again, and if you have self-control, you say, nope, I don't need that. I'm going to have, have self-control. So self-control is important. Uh, in the life of a believer, and self-control, we're going to see tonight, that has to be developed and exercised uh, on a continuous basis. So let's start first with our foundational scripture, which we find in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Let's all read together, please. But the fruit of the Spirit is, number one, love. Number two, joy. Number three, peace. Number four, long-suffering. Number five, kindness. Number six, goodness. Number seven, faithfulness. Number eight, gentleness. And number nine, self-control. And the Word of God says, against such there is no law. Verse 25, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Hudson Church, uh, uh, during the holiday seasons uh, is a time where a lot of people commit the most suicides are during this time. People are lonely, the families that come together, they break up, and, and um, you know, um, the love of God wants to bring them together, but then friction, because of lack of self-control, they break up again, and we need to understand uh, that um, we all have all nine of these uh, features, elements, characteristics of the fruit of the Spirit, and tonight, again, we want to look at self-control. We will not be able to finish tonight, because this is one where the, the Holy Spirit has given me more on it that we need to stay a little bit on self-control. Uh, but it's, the first thing that we have to understand is we were all made in the image of God. Amen. And when God made us, he gave us dominion. And, and we, what dominion means is that you have self-control. That, that you, allow, you control the situations and circumstances instead of allowing the situations and circumstances control you. So let's just confirm because everybody needs to understand that we were made in the image of God. And we already have the self-control. We, we don't need, God, I need more self-control. Once again, that prayer will not be answered because already God gave you the self-control. You need to exercise and develop your self-control that's already in you in Jesus' name. One of the things and one of the examples I'm preparing for this message is electricity. Is electricity good? Is electricity useful? Can electricity be, uh, uh, kill you? Because it doesn't, it, there's something wrong with the regulator uh, that controls the electricity, the amount of the electricity, it, it, that same outlet can blow a fuse or, or blow a, um, a light bulb uh, because it, it, the regulator does not control the current, the amount of current that's being allowed into an appliance. Same way, we have power, Hudson Church. We have the power of the universe inside of us, and we don't have self-control. We can blow up things all around us. Blow up people, blow up marriages, blow up families, blow up businesses, blow up our, 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 our freedom, our liberty. The jails are full of people that could have been sane, and for one instant, they lost their self-control, and they did something that is not characteristic of them. Some people in jail have done it a lot, but there are some, there are a lot that for that moment, they lost it, and they call it insanity, the temporary insanity, but it's really that you lost self-control at that moment. A lot of times when people go to the mall and you see something, you got to have self-control and say, I will not buy, lady, that pair of shoes. 
because I don't even have room for them, right? But I got to have it. The sale might, it might not happen. They might not have my size. So you lost self-control and you just bought it. So self-control is in a lot of areas in our lives. And self-control, if we don't know how to dominate it and use it correctly, it will bring havoc into our lives. So pay attention, please, in Jesus' name. Genesis 126, I will read. Then God said, let us make man in our image. According to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over, all the, over, over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Some of you might say, I know that scripture, but your lives show that you don't know the scripture because you're out of control in your lives. So let's all focus and stay on and have self-control. Amen? Amen? Amen. Verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. He created them, verse 28. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and do what? Subdue it. That means to control it uh, and uh, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Verse 29. And God said, see, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed. To you it shall be for food. Verse 30. Also to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth in which there is life, I have given every green herb for food, and it was so. Verse 31. Let's all read together. Then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So God created us. Uh, this is spiritually. We still didn't have a body yet. We were created spiritually. And our spirits have dominion. Our, our spirits have self-control. But what's our problem in 2022? Our flesh does not. And we constantly battle with our flesh. And we have to learn how to dominate our flesh, dominate our thoughts, dominate our emotions, our feelings, our soulish realm, and that's where we miss it in 2022, and that's where we have the problem of self-control. So now, God made us because he wanted a family, and God wanted us to freely choose to, to come into the family of God. You can choose to uh, accept God, to be in the family of God, to accept Jesus, or you can choose not to accept that he gave us free will. And some people say he shouldn't have given us free will, but then he, we would have been robots, and God does not want that. He wants us a family uh, that, that we choose to be with him. Amen? Amen? So then what did he do to give us this? He put Adam, the first man, uh, uh, in, in the garden, and then he said, out of all the trees, you can eat everything that you want, as much as you want. There are over a thousand. We don't know how many trees there were, but of one, of the good and evil, you shall not eat. So now you have to exercise self-control. So now, if you have everything that you can want, but you can't have one, what does the flesh want? The one that you can't have. And he said, the day you eat that one, you're going to surely die. But he had to exercise self-control. And sometimes through people, people entice you to lose your self-control. So you have to watch because in Adam's case, he obeyed the, the, the temptation that came through the serpent, through his wife. But he could have said, no, we do not do that. But he lost his self-control at that particular moment. So let's just confirm this, and then we will get into it. So second, Genesis 2, verse 8. The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Verse 9. And out of the ground... Out of the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Go down to verse 15. You just got to read the rest of yourself. Then the Lord God took the man and he put him in the garden of Eden to tend and to keep it. He gave him a job. Okay, verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden you may do what? Freely eat, okay? Verse 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. 
It is our choice what happens in our lives. Some people think it, the devil made you do it. The devil cannot make you do anything. All the devil can do is tempt you. All the flesh can tell you to do is tempt you. But you're the one who's making the choice. So in 2022, if you're making poor choices, you're the one who's making those decisions. Uh, you can't ask God to help you uh, to make better decisions because God does not make a decision for anyone. We have to make the decision exercising our self-control. Amen? Amen? Amen. So it is important for us to understand that God has given us dominion over every single thing around us. Let's confirm this with, and, and God tells us to choose blessings instead of cursing. Amen? Deuteronomy 30, 19. Let's all read. Please. I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may be. Who chooses the blessing? Who chooses the cursing? You do also. Okay, verse 20. That you may love, that you may, remember that word, that you may, because a lot of people do not love God. They say that they do. That you may love the Lord your God, that you may what? May obey his voice. You got to make that choice to obey, and that you may cling to him. You can choose to cling to God, or you can choose to let him go. Who, who, who controls that? We do, okay? For he is your life and the length of your days, and that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, to give to them. Amen? Psalms uh, 8, verse 4. Let's all read together from the Amplified Version, please. Let's all read. What is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of the earthborn man that you care for him. He's asking a question. What, what are we? Okay, verse 5. Yet you have made him but a little lower than God or heavenly beings, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. Do you know you, you have glory and honor? Right now you have glory and honor. If you're in prison, you have glory and honor. If you're in the gutter, you have glory and honor. We all have glory and honor right now in Jesus' name. We might not act it. We might not be walking in it. We might not know that we have it, but we have glory and honor. Amen? Verse 6. You made him to have what? Dominion over what? The works of his hands. You have put all things under his feet. Everything that God creates for us is for our benefit and we have to learn how to control those things because if we don't have self-control, something good can turn into something bad in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen? So now we cannot exercise self-control on our own power. We need the power of the Holy Spirit in us to help us exercise the proper self-control. Amen? Acts 1.8. Let's all read, please. But you shall receive what? Power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me. In Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Sometimes in 2022, if we don't have self-control, it could be that there's a problem with our relationship with the Holy Spirit. We might not have the relationship with the Holy Spirit. We might not have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But we know Christians that have the Holy Spirit baptism on them. They pray in tongues, and they still have a problem with self-control. Do we know anybody like that? Keep on looking straight. <laughs> Nobody here is that way, right? Amen? Amen? Amen. So now, let's look at what we need to put on, and this is the choice that we have to do to, be, to practice self-control in 2022. Ephesians 4.17, the new man. Let's all read, please. Ready? Let's read. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk, in the futility of their mind. You can't walk according to what you think. You have to walk according to what the Word of God says. In Jesus' name. If you don't know what the word of God says, you're going to walk according to what you think, according to what the world says, and you're going to have trouble on planet Earth. Verse 18. Having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their hearts. Verse 19. Who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness. To work, all, to work all uncleanliness with greediness. Verse 20. But you have not so learned Christ. 21. If indeed 
you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth in Jesus. If you really know Jesus, then you shouldn't be doing those things. So do you really know Jesus? You say you do, but do you really know Jesus? Look at someone tell them, do you really know Jesus? In Church TV app brings you live services direct to your smartphone, smart TV, and much more. You'll also get special announcements, streaming messages, and exclusive content 24 hours a day right in the app. Experience unlimited streaming through streaming platforms absolutely free. Visit your app store or download the Hudson Church app through PushPay. For more information, go to facebook.com forward slash the Hudson Church. Okay, all right. So if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth in Jesus, verse 22, ready, that you put off, you got to do it, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust. After we accept Jesus, does the old Renee, does the old you try to come back? The answer is yes. And when he tries to do, what do you have to say? Self-control, get out of here. You are dead. We don't want to do that anymore in Jesus' name. Or you can say, let's get it on. And you know what's going to happen? You're going to get it on. <laughs> okay? And you're going to get it on seven times worse than you were before. Okay? Verse 23. And be renewed where? In the spirit of your mind. Verse 24. And that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Hudson Church, we are a new creation. Our new creation is our spirit man, not our old, not the flesh, but we are new creation. We need to act and think like new creations in 2022. 2 Corinthians 5, 16. Let's all read. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. One of the things, that, and I'm studying more on, on Paul's ministry, that the apostles, when they were with Jesus, they knew him according to the flesh. But, apost but uh, the, uh, Paul knew him through revelation according to the spirit. And what do you think is better, to know somebody according to the flesh or according to the spirit? According to the spirit. According to the Spirit, okay? So it says, Christ, yet now we know, know him thus no longer. Verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. What, what things have become new? In your spirit. The, the flesh, if you had brown hair, you have brown hair. If you weigh 200 pounds, you're still going to weigh 200 pounds. Uh, but in the spirit, that's what's created new. And now there has to be a rebirth, a regeneration from the inside out in Jesus' name. Amen? So these are the things now. And I want you to look at these words. And especially that you have to be exercising and developing. People, people want, God, do it for me. Lay hands on me, and it's done. Abracadabra. No, it doesn't work that way. You got to exercise, and you got to develop your self-control. 2 Peter 1, verse 2. Let's all read. Ready, please? May grace, God's favor, and peace, which is perfect well-being, all necessary good, and spiritual, I'm sorry, all spiritual prosperity, and freedom from fears, and agitating passions, and moral conflicts be multiplied to you in the full, personal, precise, and correct knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Can you know God but not know him correctly? Can you have knowledge of God but it's not correct knowledge? The answer is yes. Okay, verse 3. Look at this now. Right. For his divine power has bestowed upon us all things that are re requisite and suited to the life and godliness through the full personal knowledge of him who called us by and to his own glory and excellence virtue. We already have it. Now he's going to give it to us. Did we catch that? Verse 4. Now here we go. Ready? By means of these, he bestowed on us his precious and exceedingly great promises so that through them you may escape by flight from the moral decay, the rottenness 
and the corruption that is in the world because of covetousness, lust, and greed, and become sharers, partakers of the divine nature. Verse 5. For this very reason, Hudson Church, adding your diligence to the divine promises, employ every effort in exercising your faith to develop virtue, excellence, resolution, Christian energy, and in exercising virtue, develop knowledge and intelligence. You got to start doing it. You got to spend the time. I, I, you know, I, I, people come to me for counseling. People speak. But they don't want to put the time in. They just they want an abracadabra, uh, uh, you know, miracle. And it just doesn't happen that way, man. It takes work. You, you have to. It is by grace. But you got to put the effort in to truly renew your minds in Jesus' mighty name. Because this world is bombarding us through those cell phones, through social media, through the computer, through everything that's around us. we got to be constantly renewing our minds in Jesus' mighty name. Amen? Amen. Verse 6. And in exercising knowledge, what does it say? Develop. Develop. Self-control. you got to develop it, okay? And in exercising self-control, what do you develop? Steadfastness. What does that mean? Patience and endurance. We're in a marathon. We're not in a 100-yard in a dash. People, you know, I, I came, I tied once, it didn't, and it didn't work. It doesn't work that way. you got to go on and go on and do it and do it and do it. Uh, and, and your family's got to be in it because the enemy looks for the weak link to come into your household. And you have to understand that it's not, you're, it's not good enough that you're strong because you're strong and you're the head, but he's going to look through whichever way he can to get into that household. Amen? We're talking about self-control. Come on. And in exercising steadfastness, what do we need to develop? Godliness. Okay? Piety. Verse 7. And in exercising godliness, what do we have to develop? Brotherly affection. Is that automatically? No, you have to develop it. You got to spend time with each other, right? And in exercising brotherly affection, develop what? Christian love. I thought it was just a prayer and that's it. Okay, verse 8. For as these qualities are yours and increasingly abound in you, they will keep you from being idle or unfruitful unto the full personal knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. These qualities will keep us straight, but if they're lacking in us, we're going to have trouble and we're going to stumble. But look what it says, verse 9. For whoever lacks these qualities is what? Blind, spiritually short-sighted, seeing only what is near to him, and has become oblivious to the fact that he was cleansed from his own old sins. Verse 10. Because of this, brethren, be all the more solicitous and eager to make sure to ratify, to strengthen, to make steadfast your calling and election. For if you do this, you will never stumble or fall. This is so powerful, this scripture. I came from uh, CCC East, uh, Apostle Fred Price, and he did over a year uh, on this one verse. And all he did was 2 Peter 1.10, that you will never stumble. You understand that word, that you will never stumble or fall? You know how power it is? Everybody's stumbling and falling all over the place. It says, if these are you, it says, you will not, maybe, it says, you will never stumble or fall. But if you're stumbling and falling, what does it mean? You got a short circuit in the items above. We got to get to work and develop and exercise our self control in Jesus' name. Amen? Yeah, I, I see. It's good. It's good. By faith, I see shalom. Verse 11. Verse 11. Thus, there will be richly and abundantly provided for you entry into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ. Amen? As my time is up for tonight, 2 Timothy 3, verse 1. 2 Timothy 3, verse 1. Let's read this so that we can be alert, Hudson Church, to develop our self-control. Ready? But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come or are here. They're here already, Hudson Church. This is here. All right? Verse 2. For men will be what? 
Love is something. If you're a lover yourself, do you have self-control? No. Lovers of money, do you have self-control? No. If you're a bolster, do you have self-control? No. Proud, no. Blasphemers, no. You can't control your mouth. Disobedience to the parents, no self-control. Unthankful, no self-control. Unholy, no self-control. Verse 3. Unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good. Verse 4. Traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God. Verse 5. Having a form of godliness, but denying its power. Hutton Church, and from such people, turn away. We're supposed to love everyone, Hudson Church, but if we're hanging out with people who are displaying these qualities, the Bible says that you will learn what their habits and then you'll get their negative habits instead of their good habits. We finish up for tonight, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33, amplified, please. I didn't give that to you. 1 Corinthians 15, th my Zoom class should have this memorized. Uh, let's all read. Do not be so deceived and misled. Evil companionships, communion, associations, corrupt and depraved, good manners and morals and characters. Hudson Church, I know that we're going to develop self-control because we already have it in, in us. By faith, we're going to allow the Holy Spirit to help us work on it uh, in Jesus' name. Did we learn something? Can we get an applause for God?